ऑस्ट्रेलियाली I happen to be Shahzad Hasan Khan and we hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kick start your day with us. First things first. Hello Hajra, how are you doing today? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much Shahzad for introducing me and thank you so much for saying welcome in so many different languages. Oh, thank you. Oh hi uh, Gulzaimers. Yeah. I forgot that. <laughs> oh hi Gulzaimers. So uh, I don't think so you can say that in a one long breath. Can you? I Because there's so really Yes, I can. Wonderful. I think so. Do you want me to give it a try? <laughs> I think yeah. I think it's going to be boring tomorrow. for the for the viewers now because oh. you know they they very used yeah. to go of hearing it every single morning. So I think tomorrow I'm going you to give it a try. You can try that. Yes. yes, exactly. So Shahzad, we've seen that Pakistan has a very rich cultural tradition and puppetry was one of the form that was popularized in Punjab and that too by the gypsies, right? We call them Khana Badosh in yes. Urdu and, and they had their way of constructing that puppet dolls although we have seen their appropriation in the popular culture in the form of the black magic which is very creepy uh, but then puppetry had their own form of conveying messages and uh, Pakistan's history is mostly oral, it's not written so a lot of things were said by the words and obviously you know uh, the oral cultural history has uh, do not have a written value in True. that sense but then they were popularized by the gypsies and they used to travel around the world and they used to took that art form around the world in the europe and spain and england and france and where Everywhere. not yes. yeah and it is said about the king akbar the mogul king that he was very strict so people were very afraid to speak truth to his face so um so in that time the, that art form flourished because then people used to say truth via those puppetry shows True. because you're not saying that puppets are actually saying that exactly. right and this is what heber must defines the public sphere where we can have the critical debates and that was this affair where the puppetry flourished and unfortunately that art form is dying now because we are not supporting our artisans that much uh, but i think that there are recent efforts in this regard to revive that art form to keep it on the floor voting track because this is the part of the pakistan this is who we are exactly and that might be one case but on the mm. other hand i think it's all about interest it's not that that uh, right. puppetry is dying down over here in pakistan i think even we speak about right. pnca they always make sure to come up with such amazing more content as well it's just that that we might not be able to witness it and i think it's sole responsibility of media houses like pakistan right. television to make sure that we highlight each and every aspect of our culture but having said that don't you think that there's so many things we need to talk about uh, you know with our parents and we cannot say that and we can use puppets to kind of do that <laughs> and they might be like bete tu uh, badmashi na kar do aisa kar ke khud baat kar de so i think for everybody who's out there farooq kaiser sahab has been that name a household name i've been his neighbor for a longer Wonderful. period of time myself may his soul rest in peace and Amen. just before he passed away i was lucky enough to conduct a show and that's what he Wonderful. he spoke about is like that it's there it's just that that the people have very different interests now so even in today's time if you want to see a puppet yes. show rather we would watch it on youtube right That's so i think what we need to do is that, that we need to bring in technological intervention to make right. sure that that art form is still visible to the audience and you know the sorry state of affairs is the khana badosh or the gypsies they are actually selling their puppet dolls out there because there's so much poverty out there yep. and um obviously i think we need to do more than i mean just keeping it revive in the pnc or that so that that art form can remain intact especially on the artisan on the gra grassroots level exactly right? and not just that you know there are so many other fronts where we really need to do quite a lot which is why you know this news update which we are going to share with you ladies and gentlemen is very right. alarming this day we are observing today everybody needs to speak about it parents need to speak about it while counseling their children so let's go let's take a listen to what's happening today why is it a very important day today so today is obviously 1st of december and it is being observed as a world aids day to raise awareness about the aids pandemic caused by the spread of hiv infection and myers for its prevention and control The theme equalize is a call to action it is a call to action for all of us to pursue the tried and the true methods required to redress disparities and aid in the eradication of the aids uh, so shahzad world aids day was the first ever global health day held for the first time in 1988 
WHO states that the main agenda this year is to highlight the growing equalities, rather inequalities in the access to essential HIV services around the world. Uh, it further states that the division, disparity and disregard for human rights are among the failures that allow HIV to become and remain a global health crisis. This year, WHO and AIDS organization are calling on global leaders and citizens to rally to confront these inequalities that drive AIDS and reach people who are currently not receiving essentially the HIV services. And exactly. In addition to that, what we really need to kind of talk about over here is that just very recently there was this news, ladies and gentlemen, that you know there's been an alarming increase True. in the disease of HIV. So imagine that we might be going somewhere wrong. We really need to educate our future generations. We really need to make sure that at least we keep our country HIV safe. You know, imagine a country where we cannot even get uh, rid from polio. God forbid if such a menace strikes us, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be really disturbing for our future generation, especially when we know that we have a major chunk of the population where people are very young. So we really need to consider early marriages sure. and we really need to kind of educate them about protection too as well. So without any further ado, and we would like to discuss more of Pakistani culture because there's also Lok Mela going yes. on here uh, in Islamabad. So we are very lucky that we have been joined by uh, Mr. Shahzad Durrani and he happens to be the Joint Secretary at the Ministry of National Heritage and Cultural Division and also simultaneously he's the Executive Director of Lok Birsa. Well, Assalamu alaikum sir and thank you so much for coming to our Walaikum show. Walaikum thank you for having me. It's wonderful. wonderful to have you over here. First of all, obviously when we speak about our arts and culture and people who look after the art and culture, they especially hold a very valuable uh, place in our hearts. So first of all, thank you very much for you know taking such a responsibility, which is not easier yes. uh, over here in Pakistan. But sir, congratulations as soon as you took office. You were given this responsibility of the Lok Mela Festival. Yes, I was. I've been there twice, recorded it myself, shared it with our audiences in 47 different countries. So what I know, I'm going to share and then we'll come back to you. Sure. So from all the provinces, the regional, provincial, each sort of representation, ladies and gentlemen, is at sure. the Lok, uh, Lok Mela Festival. All you need to do is go there, check their cuisines, check their culinary arts, you know, make sure that you check their handicrafts, you know, you can get the where uh, Peshawari chappals, you can get mm. the Balochi chadre and for whatever and, and you need. And, and the best part is that it's not even expensive. You know, true. these are the things which should be branded and that's how we are branding it in Pakistan. But let's uh, move on to Shahzad Bhai because Shahzad Bhai, whoever's name is Shahzad, I've seen they're smart people around. <laughs> and uh, to be very honest, you know, when, when you took to office, all of a sudden you had this responsibility that you had to do it and the benchmark was somewhere here. Yeah. So was it difficult for you in the first place? Yeah, um, it was difficult because uh, it was the first time that I was uh, heading such an institution, such a uh, big responsibility. But I was lucky that I was uh, trusted by my bosses, by our advisor to Prime Minister, Mr. Engineer Amir Bukam, and our Secretary, Madam Farida Mazhar. They have been wonderful, they have been supportive, and they have always been there for us. So when I was given this responsibility, I was also given the uh, power, the authority to make it happen. Wow. And uh, the first thing that always needs to be addressed are the finances. So I was, <laughs> <laughs> so I was given a budget, uh, which was uh, given the financial constraints that we are facing currently was uh, not as much as last year's, but still we have uh, made do with that. Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah, uh, response that we have received from the people, not only of Islamabad and Pindi, but from all across Pakistan and even foreigners, is amazing. So, and we're lucky. I mean, the weather is perfect. Weather you is go perfect. Out there, it's sunny away in Islamabad. You, yeah. you enjoy the Mela. Right. Then there are culture nights followed by the entire day's Mela Wonderful. as well. And you know, there are people coming in, right. different languages. They have their own dances, which they, you know, you certainly do not even have to ask them that, uh, right. you know, uh, would you mind performing for us? Once you go there, you have this feeling of festivity, and mela, and it's going on. And matter of the fact is, Shazad, that I think in Pakistan, we do not have a lot of areas or the, uh, what do you call the spaces there, we could go out for the entertainment. The hoteling is the major source of that, but such sort of you festivals... You don't do that quite a lot, right? <laughs> I do that. Where did you get this impression well, why from? Why don't you take us then? Uh, it wasn't my turn. I think next, next time it's your turn. Okay. All right, sure. Okay. 
So uh, I wanted to ask you, sir, about the branding thing of Pakistan. And I do, like I mentioned in the earlier on, the Pakistan wants to uh, brand itself as a, one of the oldest civilization, right? We are the predecessor of the Indus Valley civilization. Exactly. And many of its uh, major cities, Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, are in, inside the Pakistan. How does that equate with the Lok Bars Mela thing? Yeah, uh, at uh, the Lok Mela, what we are trying to do is project Pakistan's living culture. The culture is ancient. It starts not from Mohenjo-Daro or Harappa. It starts from Mahargar civilization. True. And uh, from there on, uh, we have the st still have the same traditions, same uh, um, handicrafts, same uh, patterns in our lives. True. Uh, we carry those traditions in our daily lives without knowing it. True. And what we are trying That's to true. do is bring artisans and uh, artists from all over Pakistan together at one place to display that culture, to display that uh, uh, color, the colors of life, the colors of life that uh, combine to make this beautiful rainbow that we call Pakistan. Exactly. And, and it's beautiful. But sir, I think what, what is really pertinent to discuss over here is that, you know, all of these artisans given a chance once a year is something which might not be very sufficient. True. And, uh, you know, they obviously need their own outlets where they can display, people True. can go and do that. So how do you think that the government can actually play a pivotal role in making sure that they bridge that gap for all of those artisans where we think that unfortunately it might be dying? Yeah, um, you're absolutely right. Uh, these artisans and artists, they need outlets, they need to reach people. Uh, their products need to uh, be seen and bought, purchased. True. So, uh, as far as Lok Virsa is concerned, we have uh, some small uh, shops which exactly. we uh, give out to right outside these, the museum. Uh, yeah, outside the museum. And we have given these to these artisans and they make their crafts uh, sitting there uh, all, all year round, not only during the Lok Pela. Hmm. And those uh, uh, arts uh, and crafts, they are uh, on display all year round. Anyone can go there and buy these. Uh, but still, it's not enough. We need to do a lot more, and uh, I'm sure that our uh, all our governments, especially provincial the governments. provincial governments, would uh, be doing their part because, as we all know, after the 18th Amendment, culture uh, as a subject has been devolved to the True. provinces. True. So they uh, need they are the major partners in this, and they have to do a lot exactly. more. Exactly, and and sir, this is something which we we have seen while growing up. You know, all True. of these sakafti melas, and you know, we still mm -hmm. remember our parents taking us there as well. <laughs> Now, when we talk about, since you've spoken about 18th Amendment, that's something which I wanted to talk about even. And that's my interest because, you know, I've seen Lok Visa, you know, making sure that every single year they're going to have this festival and people come out in huge numbers. Exactly. Why can't we bridge that gap, which is a missing element because of the 18th Amendment and kind of have partnerships or joint ventures with provincial governments to take them throughout all over Pakistan, you know, so that Sindhi people can go to Gilgit Baltistan, people exactly. from Punjab exactly. can go to Sindh. Exactly. That is a brilliant idea. In fact, uh, this year we have been discussing these things with our provincial counterparts during the Mela. Uh, this Mela provides us the opportunity to have uh, interaction with our provincial counterparts in, a, in an informal setting. So we have been uh, doing some thinking about it and we have uh, requested, uh, last night uh, I was with the Minister, Provincial Minister for Culture and Tourism of uh, Gil Gilgit Batistan. And he was very keen on exactly this idea. Yeah. And uh, we have decided that we'll sit together after the end of Mila and we'll do something about it. And on similar lines, I would like to do this. If the provinces invite us, we can coordinate and we can certainly go there and uh, make this, the make this happen. the can support you and you know, can, can be in conversation with the yeah, ministry? Yeah, obviously, obviously. Provinces. Obviously, it will, all will be done through the ministry and uh, we we would be keen to do that. Exactly. In addition to that, sir, obviously, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, you're a family man yourself. What have you enjoyed at the Mela by far? What sort of cuisines have you enjoyed every <laughs> single day? Because being yeah. the executive director, obviously, they might bring it in. Sir, <laughs> tikka try karo. Sir, I baluchi saji try karo. Yeah. So what have you tried? Uh, yeah, I have tried uh, almost all the cuisine there. <laughs> and, uh, Can you name a few, please? Yeah, the uh, the ones that I liked the most. Ji. So I liked, uh, I loved the saji, wow. the lady saji in the Balochistan Pavilion, and then the KP uh, chapal kebabs. Wow. Wonderful. And uh, I see, even overheard you in the office. Uh, somebody, <laughs> you were telling somebody about the chapal kebab. Yeah, right? I was, I was. And uh, also the Sindhi mava. Wow. Uh, I tasted it for the first time and I loved what it. What is it? 
it's a sweet dish okay uh, oh, it's okay. made from milk and uh, you know that sort of uh, khoya sort of thing but uh, Suji, quite different yeah, yeah. because no, when we talk Suji. about sin and mawa you know there's something very different <laughs> when it comes to our, <laughs> <laughs> come to our mind no 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 uh, 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 <laughs> not that one not that one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we uh, i also love the kawa there in the kp pavilion KP. Yeah. i think after so, so many foods you Chupal definitely need to yeah. have the kawa uh, yeah you do you do digestion purposes. and and more than food uh, looking at me you might I thought guess it but more than food i love the dances and the music yeah, uh, uh, amazing amazing dances and uh, songs and, that too, and with music with the provincial instruments yeah exactly with the original instruments yes. the genuine the genuine thing it's not that synthesized sound coming mm. from you know uh, <laughs> the keyboard or computer or so it's all yeah, yeah it's, it's all original organic. authentic organic yeah. exactly wonderful and yeah. i am really glad that we have such sort of representation here in islamabad where we can enjoy different cultures uh, so sir this mela is happening every year right yes. so what is different this time how has that evolved over the years yeah uh, it's been happening since uh, 1981 oh uh, so it's been uh, more than 40 years now uh, it's a, it's become a tradition of islamabad and uh, right. we grew up uh, going to these melas True. in our childhood and this year uh, it's uh, the first time uh, after uh, the two pandemic year the two covid years right. that the last years i would call True. them as far as cultural activity islamabad is concerned Uh, in those two years, uh, the mela did happen, but it was at a very limited stage. Uh, stage, so you know because of the, all all the restrictions and you know social distancing and that that sort of thing. This year, it is happening on a full scale for ten days, and with full participation of all the provinces and all the regions, and uh, they have brought their authentic goods, artists, artisans. Uh, food and uh, it's fun and and once you go there the thing that strikes you the most is the happiness is the uh, the smiles on the, the faces way the of people, people. Are yeah it. they they are enjoying themselves they let loose uh, and they you know just go uh, they enjoy the immersive experience that they have there that brings a lot of joy to me and, uh, and being and able to do that pakistan has a very celebratory culture because we were talking also about it that we celebrate everything True. especially about the tapas because my parents Tapa. used to tell uh, tell us that whenever they were sowing the the plants especially in the villages they used to sing the song and especially when they were plucking it out they also used to sing the song to celebrate that and this is the diversity of pakistan this is how pakistan is and we really enjoy and own our country so i think i'm going to take advantage of this opportunity and would i would rather okay. request you to kind of share a tappa with us too because there's one i remember chitta kukkad bane re the kasni du batte wali i think it is always but, but sir very quickly you know towards the end of this segment obviously we have spoken about an array of uh, what is available for our amazing people out there so mm. the people of twin cities can go in fact people from outside the cities mm. even come to see the mela not just that because they are so interested in buying all of those things which are available mm. over there which are hand knitted hand made mm. the original handicrafts the organic handicrafts of pakistan and that too from all the different provinces and regions mm. so very quickly towards the end so we have a cultural night too as well right so what happens on a cultural night yeah uh, uh, we have cultural nights of all the regions and provinces every uh, day every every night yeah wow. so from it starts from 6 and goes on till the audience uh, <laughs> is there <laughs> is there and uh, we have a provincial night each night so last night we have uh, gb night yes. gb cultural night tonight we'll have kashmir night wow and tomorrow it will be mehran night then kp and and the finale the finale will be the punjab night finale will be the Sunday. punjab night so ladies and gentlemen the lok mela festival is actually taking place till the 4th of december at lok vista over here in islamabad please make sure to go there so do we have a ticket or and what price is the ticket yeah ticket is very nominal we haven't increased the ticket for the last many years it's 100 rupees for That's adults it. and 50 rupees for kids uh and f- under kids under 5 years they go free wow. and no other ticket uh, all my kids are under 5 you know so i think i'm going to go to as well but <laughs> thank you very much azad bhai for being with us it was You're lovely welcome. to be in conversation with you and it's a milestone that you've achieved and that to right at the very beginning of when you've taken up the office as thank well you, so congratulations you. to you for the successful conduction of the lok mela festival ladies and gentlemen the humble request will be please make sure that you go out there i'm not going to say that go out there and support them 
I think this is this is who we are. We really need to be out there for our people, for our talent, for our artisans, for our artists. Please make sure that you do that. But with that, we actually need to head out towards a short break because when we are going to come back, now this is this this very important subject, and that is that most of the time parents will tell you, "Be a doctor, ban jao." Right. You know, when I was venturing into television, that's what I heard as well, and I was like, you know, let me do what I want to do. But for people who really want to be doctors, you know, if there's inner calling, mm. how do they get themselves admitted? How do how do they choose which college to go to? Which college will benefit them? Is something which we will be discussing, and then the health sector in general. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back. And before going on to the break, we were talking about Pakistan's culture and cultural heritage and whatnot. And so, even in the break, we were talking about Pakistan's culture. True, true that's true. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about something which is very much important, and it's a universal access to healthcare, healthcare policies, and healthcare services in Pakistan. And also today happens to be World AIDS Day yes. too, Shahzad. Uh, so this is a very pressing issue, and we need to talk about it and popularize this concept that you know talking about it is not should not be stigmatized true. at all, right? True. We need to have more such of conversation. because with the emergence of social media i mean there's so much access to information already out there so i think it's a high time that we need to guide our children our i mean youth about it and you know how to tackle such sort of issue so without any further ado we would like to introduce our guest who happens to be mr yasir khan niazi he happens to be managing director islamabad medical and dental college and also of the dr akbar niazi teaching hospital assalam alaikum sir and thank you so much for coming to our show thank, thank you for inviting me over sir it's always an honor to have you over here you uh, sir Certainly, in the Twin Cities and over here in Pakistan, happen to be one of the most influential figures. Alhamdulillah, thank you. You've been producing uh, a lot more educated future generations. You've taken that responsibility, and you've been really true to that. So, thank you very much for your service to the nation. Thank you. It's an honor to have you over here. Let's get started. First things first. Obviously, it happens to be World AIDS Day. Very recently, we have seen this uh, very depressing news. Hmm. In fact, it was disturbing that there has been an alarming. increase in hiv and that too over here in islamabad and rawalpindi as well first of all what's your take on that how do you think that we need to educate our future generations where pakistan happens to be one of those countries where 60% or more population is of youngsters yes it's very important thank you very much for uh, picking this topic today and talking about it i think i think this is a topic which we need to talk about it's a taboo True. we in, in in our culture in our society it's not something we want to talk about it's not easy to talk about True. it's not easy to talk about with our youth about it there's a, there's a taboo and cultural uh, barriers which stops us we need to overcome that because it's a reality True. and if we don't talk about it we, we this will has a potential to become an epidemic uh, levels and it is it's showing the numbers right now the increase which is showing right now are alarming exactly and we have to ha- create awareness and we have to talk to our youth about it and uh, and about their lifestyle as we become more westernized and uh, adopt a westernized lifestyle it this becomes a big issue for us and um, and it's and it's not only because of the lifestyle is t- blood transfusion and other things and uh, uh, it's it's very uh, currently the, t- the issue another issue is is very uh, uh, low reported it's not it's reported true. to a level which it is people don't get tested true. the thing is it's a stigma but it's not it's not uh, something bad hiv is curable now true. True. if it's a, there are a prevention to it there is management program for it so if we find out or if we test about it there is nothing to be afraid of it's nothing that wojo palace uh, we used to have a stigma of that it goes through the touch right. feeling and all this it's not of any that sort we just have to have the awareness use the precaution and we have to create awareness among our youth uh, about this epidemic and we need to uh, overcome it and it is of utmost importance as well and sir right at the beginning i've mentioned that you know pakistan happens to be one of those countries where polio still exists so imagine god forbid if we have another catastrophe in the name of hiv 
that certainly mm. will have a lot of burden on our uh, medic facilities as well. Exactly. And, and it's, uh, the thing is, it's not necessary. It's uh, increasing because of the life cycle. It's the reuse of um, blades, uh, blades the barbers. Uh, barbers, things like that. Infection. So there are many other reasons. If you have one infected person, mm. it can spread in other ways. Mm. Not necessary. It means that there are social ills in the society. Exactly. Uh, and and we so we have to be realistic about it. And the people who have HIV, we, we need to um, embrace them into the society. We need to help them out. We need to counsel them. We need to encourage them. And we need to make them productive members of the society. So uh, uh, this awareness can be increased and we could have this under control. And sir, in times of COVID, we have seen that right. there was so much testing going on. I mm. mean, it's just not the blades of the, uh, you know, going to the barber. I think it can be the reuse of the syringes too. True. Mm. Exactly. And imagine that, you know, people like us, we were blessed that, you know, we were able to afford the tests from uh, some expensive and quality standard laboratories. But imagine people, uh, you know, in the rural areas, what do you think they might have done? And that might, God forbid, be the reason post-COVID that we are seeing an alarming increase in that twin HIV. Uh, the thing is, uh, the program exists. The government uh, have a HIV program right, and so they, they are providing the support. It's only the matter is awareness. Um, uh, even awareness among the healthcare workers to know where to send the patient if they suspect uh, to get them tested. We need to, the hospitals have to take responsibility and, and test the patients. And how do you do that? Come. Well, you have to identify the high risk uh, population okay. and then you uh, go and test them whenever you get a chance. The government is providing us uh, uh, with all kind of the facilities. I wouldn't blame the government here. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, for us, it's very easy escape for us to say. And they we don't the do it at all. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, <laughs> facilities are here. The uh, healthcare uh, sector has to step up. The education sector has to step up and help with awareness. And we have to start with the vigilance, first of all, when it comes to blood transfusions, True. when it comes to reuse of blades and barbers where, where we have a blood exchange happening, as well as at some stage, the lifestyle. Exactly. And also, Shazad, we've seen that there are a lot of conversation regarding the One Health, where the health of the humans, health of the animals, and health of the environment is all intertwined. So, for example, just imagine the COVID was because we have put so much strain on the Earth's resources that we've seen that the pandemic was out there and infected the entire globe out there, right? Well, there can be a different opinion, you know, whether it was from a lab in China or not. You I know, mean, I these are conspiracy think, yeah. theories that we don't know what is the truth out there, but a lot of scientific journals pointed out that it, the transmission from the, was from the bats. But until there's a, I mean, authentic research out there, we really don't know. Nobody's going to let that research come out. Now, that's what the problem is. I think everybody needs to be very honest with them. Imagine, right. so all of these controversies we've been talking about, we, we, we never know, you know, it might be the pharmaceutical companies who wanted to bring in their medicine, you know, for the cure of COVID, you know, so you <laughs> never know. You know, it can be either way around, but let's not go over there. Since, since we were talking about awareness over here. Right. So, sir, obviously it's that season where a lot of children are looking forward to getting admissions into medical colleges. And you happen to be one of the leading medical colleges over here and that too, you have an entire education segment which you are catering to, may it be dentistry, may it be MBBS, you know, so mashallah. And it has taken you years to build that facility and I've been a witness to that because my nephew became a dentist from your dental college in DC. Now, what I wanted to talk about over here is that what will you suggest for the kids out there? What range of marks are you considering over here? How many applications, first of all, do you have? Well, uh, medical education remains the most popular form of education the students seek in Pakistan. It's very popular. There's a lot of demand. There's a lot of interest. And people still see uh, hospitals and, and uh, they see hospitals and um, uh, being a doctor, a very honorable uh, profession. So there's a lot of interest from them. Uh, and it, that's what it creates that uh, we currently, just to give you an example, that we have 100 seats in uh, MBBS. That's it. And, uh, uh, that's it. But we have 11,000 applications. Ooh, that's 1,000 students per seat. True. And that's the type of competition we are looking at. What my message uh, to the first of the students, Medical, if you don't get admission in medical college, that's not end of the world. True. Medical profession is vast and uh, there are so many other specialties you can do in medical education and, and do that uh, and, and progress and contribute. 
we need, the COVID showed us that, that how much we knew the virology, immunology, uh, research, development of diseases, vaccine, and, and these kind of researches. Research, yes. These are all what we need. And we need to we need to look into these type of specialties. Nutrition, we are talking about AIDS prevention, the community medicine, the prevention side of the medicine also. It's a big vast field. But those who are seeking, what I will tell them, do the, your diligence. Know where you're applying. Just getting into a medical college is not enough. True. Know where you're applying, so tell us where today, we are. Sir. Well, that's why we have you over here. Exactly. You, you know, what I recommend to them, go and do some due diligence on the college. Okay. Look at the faculty. Okay. Look at their, and most importantly, look at their teaching hospital. What is their teaching hospital? Because the mm. thing is the training, the practical training happens at the hospital. True. So the quality of the teaching hospital matters when you are choosing a medical college, especially in private sector. True. Government sectors, we are very much blessed with very good hospitals, but in private sector, there are still needs choice to be made. True. Then you need to look at the faculty. Then you also look at the extracurricular activities being offered um, in terms of career development, leadership True. development. Because that you, this is a relationship you're going to be forming with an institution for next five to six years. True. And this is what is going to determine where you are uh, and where you're going to go in the future. So, how so chooses So, it, so it, it is obviously a challenge for the uh, you know, education sector as well when we speak about uh, med medicine. How do you think now you're going to make sure that you know, when the competition is so tough that there are 1,000 candidates for one seat, what are you looking forward to? What sort of kids would you want in your college? <laughs> Sorry. What we look for is we, we, we look for a student who can take, um, who's, who has the leadership, uh, who has shown leadership qualities. We prefer a well-rounded student okay. who will come in, who can take the pressure. Uh, because the medical education is changing. It's becoming more evidence-based. It's more becoming more problem-based rather than theoretical as it used to be. Yes. So you have to have some, uh, other than that you have a very good books and books knowledge and how you can learn from the books, you have to start learning practically. Uh, we have integrated models. There's no more subjects anymore. There is system-based education which is coming up. Then we have clerkship model, which is more that you will get involved with the patient and learning from the patient from the very beginning. So the uh, medical education is evolving and it's developing and it's innovating. Technology is coming in. True. So you have to have, to, when we select the students, the, uh, the selection of the students is very important that we look at that the student which has the acumen to understand these things and most of all, take pressure. Exactly, and sir, very quickly, when we speak about taking pressure, obviously there might be a lot of pressure on you because when we speak mm -hmm. about a private medical college, I think we, and we speak about 11,000 applications, that means 11,000 people have, alhamdulillah, wealthy parents you know, who are still looking forward <laughs> to their kids getting admission, mm -hmm. whether they get it, uh, get into a government college, that's not their concern. They're like, better doctor banobas. Mm. So mm. how do you handle the pressure? Do people call you most of the time, ka, sir, ye dekhe, please, mere bachche ka dakhla. Pakistan oh. ka culture hai toh. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so how do you handle that? <laughs> <laughs> very big, very good question. And um, uh, very hard to answer. <laughs> uh, we, we manage. Yeah. We, we look at it from case to case basis. Mm. Sometimes you, we look at, uh, because at, at least at Islamabad Medical and Dental College, financial is not. We look for the students. Wow. And if we find a good student, it doesn't matter if he can afford or not. We have a scholarship program. True. We have a sport program. We do that. Plus, then we like to develop a diversity also. We, we, are, we are blessed that everybody from Pakistan applies there. So we want to create an environment student body which is representative of Pakistan. Uh, and and we, we do do give consideration to the different areas so the different cultures can come together and we learn from it. Um, Isla uh, Islamabad Medical and Dental College students is, is, is a community uh, and it's a community of scholars and we want to keep it. It's, we don't want to make it that it's only Islamabad, Rawalpindi students or from this area. We make a concerted effort that we get diversity in and where we not only learn from each other, but we learn from each other's languages, cultures, because Pakistan is blessed. True. We have such a beautiful language and cultures, and as we move more than 50 kilometers, we have a new culture True. which is introduced. True. And we want to bring that beauty of diversity to our So there's no compromise body. on quality? There's never. Wonderful. Wonderful. So talking about the universal access to the healthcare, right? How can we universalize this concept of free access to healthcare? Because obviously in the rural areas, there are a lot of people 
who are suffering from the healthcare problems and they do not have access to that. So how can we do and that? And before you answer that, I bear witness to it because I've been to IMDC myself. So imagine that people actually okay. think that dentistry is really very expensive. Okay. So they've always made sure that it's not going to be expensive. It's Wonderful. affordable for a lot of people. Imagine that I've even taken my domestic staff over there. Wonderful. They were very helpful. And all of the doctors who were there, you know, they treat you with state-of-the-art facility, everything. They're equipped with everything and their rates are nominal. So, you know, if you're Wonderful. actually looking for cheaper dentistry solutions, I mean, for where you really need help, it's not aesthetic. I think IMDC is the place to go. Please. Yes. Uh, universal healthcare is important. This is a basic right. True. Um, we have uh, what I call a revolutionary program and Sehat Sulat program uh, it is. And I think it should continue. Mm -hmm. And private sector True. and public sector needs to work in to make sure that it works. Mm -hmm. It's a, a start. There will, uh, there's always problem with any program which is introduced. There's always challenges there. Eventually, we will have to move to insurance-based uh, uh, healthcare industry. At the same time, healthcare industry in the private sector has to understand that it's an industry. It needs to operate that way. So we have, um, we need to look at it from a point of view that, uh, you know, we need to develop economies of scale, introduce technologies. And through technology, we need to access and provide healthcare to the rural areas where it is. Because Pakistan has, has a unique problem. We, we have shortage of our healthcare workers. And I'm not talking about doctors here only. We have uh, challenges with our nursing care, which is actually the patient care. We have our technologists. We have a big issue with the medical technology True. and having the right uh, technologists so at the right places. On, on top of that. Exactly. Too. So True. we need to develop that. So it's, th this has to, we need to declare a healthcare emergency uh, going forward because now we are increasing. We are already beyond 220 million. Yeah. We are already talking about 230 million people. Mm -hmm. And this problem, and with the bulge of youth and, and, and the problems and the disease and environment, mental impact on health is coming up. If we do not uh, declare a health emergency and come up with a compressive, uh, comprehensive health uh, policy plan, I think Pakistan will is looking at a huge challenge in the future. So, sir, where, where do you think that you know that the government and the private stakeholders actually join hands? Do you think that that has happened previously and that's the way forward in future? It hasn't. You know, uh, unfortunately, we always looked at um, them very separately public and healthcare system. Private has been always been demonized in one way or another. Um, and it's, you know, uh, and things like that. The government has to realize that in order to provide an universal healthcare, private sector is a partner. True. And they need to True. view private sector as their partner and see how we them. True. The government's uh, job is to provide regulatory and standard and standardization and qualities. Healthcare management is better done and more efficiently in private sector. So the well, private sector the has to <laughs> step up. Uh, yes, it is. It has to be a mix. You can't yeah. have one True. and another. True. Because uh, what COVID uh, has proved us is, has shown us one thing, that at one end we have the NHS model, which is a nationalized healthcare. That was under strain. On the other hand, we have a 100% private sector, which is the American system, we call it, the most True. commercialized system. Both of them at some stage failed True. Yeah. and did not deliver. So we have to keep on trying to find the equilibrium uh, where public private sector has to reach mm -hmm. and everybody needs to know what their roles are. You can't leave it. I agree with that you, we can't leave it 100% to the corporate sector and we can't, but the thing is the efficiency in the public sector is not there. Thank and, you very much. And add, add into this conversation, thank you so much for saying that. And the reason you mentioned the NH, NHS failed and also the commercialized system failed was because they never valued human. They've always valued the capital over that and that is why, but I'm very glad that Pakistan has always pioneered the massive social welfare schemes. So for example, Benazir Income Support Program was there and was given access to the women, especially the uh, women of the rural areas where they can access the medical services services and I'm really glad and proud that we have such sort of models here. Exactly and in addition to that ladies and gentlemen obviously State Card was an initiative of Mia Mohammed Nawaz Sheep Saab as well so it just got renamed but thank you very much Yasir Bhai for you. being with us. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. much for counseling our future generations till the next time ladies and gentlemen look after yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Good morning. Allah Hafiz.